So I'm going to go up to freeze, freeze painted pixels. So that will freeze all the light skin. And then I will invert that selection as we have often had to do during this tutorial. And this gives us access to just the light skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the texture here with some scales using the reptile skin scales. Looks like this one. S-C-L-E-O-1. I'm sure I'll remember that. Now I'm also going to include normal map data in this so it looks like there are actual bumpy scales on the bottom of this alien here. I don't want that conflicting with the normal map that's already present. As you can see here in the normal map view, we've got some roughness, and that comes from the base skin layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that. Maybe not do a block out erase like I've been doing. I'll erase this one by hand just so I have a little more control over it. Unfortunately, when you freeze per pixel or when you freeze the painted pixels it doesn't do a whole it doesn't do a very good job of partially freezing the partially painted pixels you can see there's a little bit of softness up here but it doesn't quite respect how soft that border was as you remember we painted it to fade out between the purple skin and the beige skin so that means this border here in the frozen selection is a bit sharper than what we actually painted so just erasing everything here in the 2D view might cause a very sudden drop off in the roughness of this skin texture. So instead, I am going to actually erase that by hand. Again, we're only erasing the normal map. Any residual bumpiness that you may see there is part of the normal map that we baked out of the sculpt. We're not going to be able to get rid of that with this method. Then I'm going to hit the one key on my keyboard in order to look at this from directly underneath it. Go to my paintbrush tool and I have this round but faded scale alpha selected and I also have a very dark color here. Maybe I'll saturate that just a little bit more. Now, I'm not going to paint roughness, but I am going to paint some depth. So as you see, I am actually painting some scales here. I'm going to increase the opacity to 100%. Oh, we're on base skin. That makes sense. Got to go back to light skin. And you see, now we are actually painting the scales. So with a low depth, maybe 5% or so, that'll be enough if I zoom in real close here into the normal map. That'll be enough, you see, to actually add in some scales. And I'll increase the spacing in the brush options to 100%, so we're not getting too much overlap as this brush repeats itself. And I'm also holding down the... I'm pushing down more lightly on my tablet as I get to the edges, so it looks like these dark scales more or less fade in as they get towards the center. Control D to deselect everything. You'll see now we have some more normal map details down there. So we're definitely, we're, we're getting pretty close to completion. Reasonably close anyway. I want to focus a bit more on this underbelly area though. I'm going to go back down to base skin and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the color operations brush right here and you know what I'll darken it for at first with a very soft alpha so this way instead of uh, painting a color it's just going to make everything a bit darker. I'll hit 2 on my keyboard so I can see just the albedo map and maybe I'll increase the strength of it a little bit. There we go. And then something I can do, maybe with the light skin layer, is to help this fade look a bit more realistic, I'll go back to my erasing tool 
and I'll select uh, some scales and I'll just start erasing up there in the pattern of some scales and now it looks like those those scale those bumpy scales are actually growing out of the rest of the skin there we go back to the base skin layer what I'm gonna do now is go back to my color operations I'm going to decrease the hue or maybe it's increase I don't remember increase hue and you see that wherever I paint it becomes blue instead maybe even a tiny bit green so what I'll do then is I'll go back to my skin and scales I'll pick a rough one like maybe this maybe one with a bit more contrast to it All right, this should do for now I'll increase I'll use spacing on this so that's not overlapping and what I can do is I can start to brush in certain areas to change the hue to make the skin here look a little bit more blue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the tail sort of shift to be coming blue as you travel down it there we go I may do that in a few other areas like on the wings I'm going to probably desaturate those and Okay, things are looking pretty good. I'm just about finished here. Just one more thing I'd like to add is I'm going to add another layer for some dirt. This particular alien in the in gameplay, what it does is it rams itself into asteroids to break them apart, which is why I've got so many scratches here on the bone plates. But I also want to put a little bit of dirt onto it. So I'll pick a dirt like color. And then I'll paint some dirt. Yeah, this needs to be above the light skin layer. That explains a lot. Should probably erase some of that. Hey, erasing it with the scales actually works pretty well. Okay, one more thing I might do to the bone layer is just with the default splattery alpha that I've got here. May just try to darken up the edges a little bit where it meets the skin. That'll help that'll help it to blend a little bit and not look like it's just been stapled right on top of the skin. And then one final thing. I know I've probably said that about three times or so by now, but that's the 80-20 rule. You'll spend 80% of your time finishing the last 20% of your work. 